Doing your references manually is a nightmare. There are so many different formatting guidelines and rules and so many different referencing styles that to try to learn it by heart and apply correctly is almost impossible. And then also different journals will require different styles. So let's say you submitted something to one journal, unfortunately it got rejected, you wanna submit it to another journal, but they're using a different referencing style, which means you have to reformat your whole document. Fortunately, there is an easy one-click solution to this problem, where basically with one click of a button, you can reformat all your citations and ensure that they are actually used correctly in your papers. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do this in this video. So stick around. So just a couple of first tips when it comes to downloading and the program Zotero. So you might want to log in or create an account um, because this will allow you to sort of sync your data across different devices. And this can be useful in case, you know, you're using one computer at work and a different computer at home. And if you create your Zotero account, then everything will be nicely synced. So I definitely recommend that. And then, you know, you want to um, download the correct program. It normally detects whether you're Windows or Mac user, right? So if you're a Windows one, you can download it here. If you're on Mac or Linux, you can also download it, download it here. And then remember to also download the Zotero connector. So you will need this in order to be able to download text, to download papers and references from databases, right? So you've got to have um, Zotero for Windows or for Mac, the program, and then you've got to have the connector as well downloaded. And it's also possible to download connectors for other browsers in case you're not using Chrome, right? So first download these two things and uh, the Zotero for Windows will automatically also download the Zotero plugin for Microsoft Word, right? So you can also use it in here in Microsoft Word. If you want to use um, Google Docs, then you need to download an additional plugin, right? But this one for Word should be automatically downloaded. Now, once you've downloaded it, like one thing I'd really recommend is to create folders in your library, right? So you've got library. And I like to keep things organized, you know, because otherwise you will just have a long list of references in here. But I think folders can be really helpful to sort of structure the different topics of the literature that you're going to be downloading articles on, right? If that makes sense. And you can also create uh, subfolders, right? So you can see in here, I've got a folder with some subfolders, right? So you want to go here and then create a folder and then name it. And I would start by creating, you know, maybe three to five broad folders related to the main topics in your field. And then as you read more, you can create additional folders or sub folders, right? So I'll do this first. The next tip that I wanted to give you is concerning how to actually download um, articles, um, right? So let's say you're on Google Scholar or this is going to be the same, by the way, for any other database that you use. If you're using PubMed or if you're using Eric or whatever else you're using, maybe your university library search engine is going to be the same. So it doesn't matter, but we're just going to use Google Scholar here uh, for simplicity. So I'm just going to type in uh, my name right um, in here. And then you're going to get all the articles here and books and things like that, that the author wrote. Now, what you can do, imagine like you have one author and you want to add like a lot of publications by that author. So the most efficient way to do it is just to type in the name of that author. And then in here, you will see a folder sign that says save to Zotero, right? So what you want to do is click on it, right? And then select all the works that you want to download to Zotero. And this will be much faster than sort of you know, going one by one and typing, you know, the title of the first work, searching for it and downloading it. You can download 10 publications in one go like this. So I think this is a, a super tip that will speed up things for you. Now, before you click to download those publications, make sure that you're in the right folder where you want those publications to be downloaded. Because what's going to happen is that Zotro is going to download them there into that specific folder. A couple of um, other things that I want to point out to you. If you're viewing a, a research paper, right, you want to make sure that in here you've got an image of like a piece of paper, right, with some writing on it. So this means that this is a research paper and Zotro will be able to 
download it. Now, if you were to view a book chapter, so a book chapter will have a symbol like this, just an open book, right? That means that you're downloading a book chapter here. Now, if this was a, a full book that you wanted to get reference to, then the symbol would be a full book, right? So you want to watch out for this so you know what you're downloading. And those symbols will also appear in your library in Zotro. So you can see, you know, what each type of work that you're referencing here actually is. You know, this is, for example, a report. Um, this is a thesis, actually, right? And it's got this little symbol of a, of a hat, right? Now, another tip that I want to give you is to also pay attention to what information Zotero gets from the internet, right? So sometimes, you know, it's just a program. It can't really think for itself, you know, so it just relies on the data that the internet gives it. And sometimes that data might be wrong. So for some reason, you know, you can see that the title in here is formatted in all caps, but this is obviously not a correct way of formatting a title. It shouldn't be all caps, but Zotero doesn't know that. So Zotero will download it like this, right? And I'll show you. If we just download it here and then go to our Zotero library, yeah, you can see that it's just downloaded like this. If we now refer to it, let's just very quickly, I'm going to talk about how to correctly refer in a second. Um, but if we dive right in here, right, we, we're getting this paper here, right? So if you do this, and then you add bibliography, this whole thing is not gonna be correct, right? Um, because it can't be all caps. There is this strange like number one before the title as well, which shouldn't be that. So you wanna pay attention to what is downloaded. Like this is only the case in like maybe 5% or less even, less than 5% of, of all cases, but nevertheless do pay attention to it. And then you can, you can just edit any information you want here like this right? By just typing something, something else, right? And then of course, this information will be updated in the text in here. If we were to go in and refresh things, Zotro is going to refresh it for us um, as well. So you can also do it later, even if those references are already in your text. Now, sometimes you might find that like you either don't have access to a specific text or for some reason Zotro can't download it because maybe it's like a very old book that published, I don't know, in the 70s, and it's no longer available anywhere online. You can solve this by adding things here, right? So if you click on this plus sign, you can add a book, book section. Uh, book section basically refers to a chapter, and you've got lots of options in here of the type of document that you want to add. And then when you, you know, when you click on it, you can just add the title, and everything else, all the information that is needed in here. Typically, you just need the title, the authors, the publication year, and the place of publication. The, these are the only things that you need, right? And you really only need to do that in very rare cases. I, I can't even remember when was the last time that I did it, but you know, in case you do have all the books or maybe government reports that Zotro can't download, then that's a good way of doing things. Now, another important tip is you know, to sort of be careful what type of document you try to download because sometimes Zotro will not be able to download the information. As you can see in here, I've got like some sort of a PDF document saved and there is no information about it from Zotro. This is going to happen if you try to download, like you've got a PDF document open like this. And this sometimes happens when, you know, you search something in a database and the link takes you straight into the PDF document. And then you will get a sign of a PDF document in here, right? Zotro will not be able to download it correctly and you won't get any information about this paper like this. So be careful about that. Now let's move on to how to actually reference correctly in here. So once you've got everything installed, you've downloaded the references that you want. Well, then first of all, you know, you want to select the, the referencing style. Now you can always change it later on. So it's not a big issue, but you want to select the correct referencing style. And if your referencing style is not here, you can download styles. So this happens rarely, but sometimes, you know, you, you do need to get additional styles, for example, for a specific journal, right? Or maybe your university invented their own referencing style. And you can just get them by clicking here, right? And you'll see there are literally like 
thousands of them divided by the discipline and stuff like this or if you know what the style is called because maybe it's a name of a specific journal you can just type it in in here and just download it to Zotro library so I think that's that's a really good feature and that will help you a lot a couple of quick tips when referencing sort of based off the most typical mistakes that I see PhD students and researchers make when referencing right so first of all if you're writing and let's say you've written a sentence like this and you've got the name of the author in here right well when you add the citation right let's say you add this what's gonna happen is that you know it's not correct because you've got the author's last name outside of the brackets and then you've got it in brackets again right so that's not correct so when you're adding this citation what you want to do is click on it and then click on omit author and then do this Right? And then it's going to show up like this. Now, another thing, you know, that you might need to do is to quote, right? So let's say you need to quote from here. So you can also do that if you, again, click on the author and then go to page and then type in the page, right? Now, another thing that I know some people want to do is like, you know, in here, let's say you have a sentence, right? And then we're going to have a reference in here. And let's say you want to add something, you want to say like, see for example, and then the author, right? There you go, right? So the way I did that was if I go to add edit citation, right? In the prefix, I just typed in whatever I wanted to come before the actual citation, right? So that's another thing that you can do. Now, let's just uh, add bibliography in here. Right, so we've got the bibliography. Now, if for some reason you ever need to change anything about, you know, any of the references in here, the best thing to do is to actually change them in here. Because if you change them um, in the Zotro program itself, it's going to then update it in Word in here as well. But if you only change it in Word and then you close the document and you open it again, you add some more citations, Zotro is going to default to whatever it has in the system. So if you ever need to make any changes, right, for example, you need to change, you know, the, the title's format, right, to capitalize every first letter of, the, of every word, then you want to do it in here in Zotro, not in the Word document. Now, if for some reason, like, you finished adding all citations and then for some reason, like, you want to change a couple of them and the formatting, but you're not planning to add any more citations, you could unlink them um, as well. And that's going to work really well. If you've enjoyed this video, but you want to get more help, individual, personalized, one-to-one -one help, publishing papers in Scopus Index journals, then schedule a free one-to-one -one consult with my team where we're going to go over your biggest challenges, outline your goals, and then we're going to propose a personalized action plan for you that will get you to those goals much, much faster. And this plan has also helped over 400 PhD students and researchers reach their goals. So it might actually help you as well. Book that free one-to-one -one consultation right below this video.